Hello guys, welcome back to episode number 13 of my single player FTB monster series. As always, I am your host, Bunny Vulture, and today we are in the nether gather gathering a little bit of bone meal. Um, not too far away from my nether portal over there, and oh, look who just spawned to die. Um, and I need a little bit of bone meal. Um, I'm making some stuff to accelerate my uh, farm growth. And I don't really have a good source of bones, uh, so I need to get some. And these little bone structures here in the nether are a good source. And we have a little friend down here who is going to die shortly. Come on. There we go. There's a few of these around here, and I've gotten some ghastly souls here, but as you can see here, what uh, I'll fly over here to the next little structure and show you a little what I'm making. I am making these guys, lily pads of fertility. And what these do is these kind of accelerate, and I think I mentioned this in my last video, uh, these accelerate the growth of crops that they are around, and I don't think, ne not necessarily just crops, but pretty much anything that uh, grows. Um, they kind of act as like a bone meal and uh, well, how you make them is you get uh, eight of these little splash fertilizer serums uh, and you can see here in the tooltip it grows crops in a wide square pattern so uh, these have a pretty decent reach to them uh, so you put eight of these around the lily pad and uh, and you can see how you I can make a lily pad so I don't have to go out and get them which is pretty awesome not having to go out and find lily pads to get um, but to make these splash serums you need a condensed splash serum and you need some bone meal or some white dye and to make these you need some another wart gunpowder glowstone and vial of water water and to make a vial you just put uh, uh glass panes in a little uh t or huge pattern with a stick type pattern and then you fill them up with the water and there you go oh uh, so yeah i'm uh gathering some bones here and eventually what I'm thinking about doing is setting up some sort of uh, skeleton farm um, to uh, get a more reliable source. Ooh, cobalt, grab you. Um, just so I can have a better source of bone meal and mainly to just add the bone meal to my bioreactor farm so that I have another uh, source of good fuel. Um, I'll show you that when I get back to the base. Uh, of how that's going. It's uh, grown significantly over the last couple days of me uh, piddling around and doing some stuff. Uh, let's see if I can get down before it hits. Yes, I can. Um, so I, I've done some miscellaneous things, nothing too major. I've hooked up the uh, tree farms to the AE system, so now they are growing. Uh, I've got uh, a ME um, limiter, redstone uh emitter redstone pulse emitter on them to stop planting the saplings once my uh, network has 500 of the sapling of any of the vanilla saplings in inventory um so and then the planters have a pretty good well he, he actually hit me good for him in in inventory so that the planters have about 64 you know have like what is it like a four by four or five by five area full of 64 stacks of stuff in there, and you are just annoying. Where are you? Oh, you're over here. I think. No, there's just a floating thing. Oh, you're up here. Ah. Not anymore, you're not. Uh, so yeah, just a little floating thing, and... I see something in the air, and I don't have it with me. Damn. But you are an aura node, and I don't have my thing with me. Damn. That's something else I've been doing lately, is going around and grabbing some uh, aura nodes randomly around the area and gather, kind of uh, increasing the amount of research points I have, because I'm going to be getting into Thalmcraft soon. And before we do that, I'm going to build a separate Thalmcraft area. And I'm not sure if you guys want to watch me build that on an episode and just to kind of see how I, you know, put things together, kind of see how I come up with things like this. Um, if you want to see me how I build uh, things, uh, let me know and I'll make the next episode about be me building my Thalmcraft structure. Um, I thought about streaming it, 
but uh, my stream quality ended up being not the greatest. Um, I, I think it's a combination of my uh, upload speed. I think I have about, <clears throat> my internet speed is three or four up, somewhere in that range, so it's not like the greatest for streaming. So the quality of it probably wouldn't be you know, all that good, so my stream might be kind of eh. Um, so that's why I really didn't, you know, do too much on it. I did, I did do it like a little test stream last night, but uh, it ended up not being really all that great. Um, all I did was kind of run around and, and miscraft, I think. Or, no, maybe I, maybe I didn't do any miscraft stuff. I think I was just doing stuff around here. Anyway, um, as you can see here, I'm getting all kinds of bone meal. I'm up to a thousand now, which is pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, uh, I wanted to kind of show you what I was doing and then kind of go into the next area of what we were going to do. And Duskberry, little bit of a visible night. Hmm. Not sure what you do, but cool. Uh, so I need to make some more of these. So I'm gonna make some more, all that I can. So I got 16, good. <clears throat> Excuse me there. Uh, so let's see, I've gotten, um, I'm, I'm kind of going to prepare in this episode for Thomcraft a little bit. Um, I'm going to go around and do kind of give you like the, a brief overview uh, of how Thomcraft 4 is in this version of Feed the Beast. Um, I'm going to go out and find some more Silverwood saplings because I'm going to in, in, uh, integrate these into my new base design. Uh, but I need to, oh, there it is. That's what I was looking for. Um, and use those and kind of use more magical stuff in and around the base. Uh, I'm also going to expand my magical crops into various things. I, I read on the magical crops uh, posting on the Minecraft forum that they these now have uh, uh, Mine Factory Reloaded support, so I can integrate these with harvesters now. So I can I can automate these guys, which means I'm gonna uh, automate the coal production and also expand that into um, lots of things. Maybe uh, primarily redstone, glowstone, uh, maybe diamonds, emeralds. We'll see. I have to see what I have. A good bit of diamonds and emeralds. Mainly diamonds. I don't have, I don't think I have that many emeralds. I think I only got about forty or so emeralds, uh, but I have. 900 or so diamonds uh, from my quarry and whatnot. Oh, and speaking of which, the quarry that was over there finished, and I have reset it up in the Mistcraft world. So that's what I that, that's what I was doing during the stream. Um, I also went around uh, in my Mistcraft world uh, doing some research points because there's lots of, uh, and I'll show you that here in, in a second before we go out and search and some other stuff. And we may just do the searching in, in there. Um, there's lots of uh, dungeons in there. So in the dungeons, I found a bunch of Ender Lily seeds. So instead of going down into the rogue dungeon to fight Endermen, I thought, oh, I don't need an Ender Pearls that often. So I thought I'll just go ahead and grow. Yeah, that's what it was. Uh, grow some Ender Pearls. So yeah, maybe instead of those, I know those take uh, two full Minecraft days to grow. Those Ender, Ender Lily seeds in the magical crops. I'm not sure what the, the growth rate on those is, but... Whichever is faster, I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. So anyway, uh, back to what I was gonna do. I need to find some of my uh, magical crop stuff that I had. That's what I wanted right there. Uh, and I think I have, whoa, lag. That was weird. Uh, let's search for essence. And I got a call coming in, so I will be right back. All right, guys, we're back, and I've got my lily pads on me. So let's find a spot to put them, shall we? And what I'm thinking is I want to accelerate the growth of several things here. So I'm going to place them primarily in these little areas here in the center and just see how well this accelerates the growth. So what that does is it puts kind of two in this area. So hopefully it'll accelerate all everything over Oops, let's get on. Everything over here, everything over there, and kind of the same thing there. Now I don't have water here, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and put, I think, eh, some water. Yeah, I don't know. Should I accelerate the trees? They grow pretty fast. I don't think I need to. I kind of really don't need to accelerate these either, but I want to get these going so I can uh, accelerate these mainly so I can get more than one bioreactor. Um, 
and that'll give me, you know, that will allow me to essentially be able to um, make, oops. Oh man, now I need to till that. Um, essentially accelerate the uh, production of the melons and pumpkins so that I can um, get more stuff going. And I keep on doing that. Uh, that's what I was looking for. So yeah, um, I just wanted to show you that and I will be right back and we can get started on the next phase of today's episode. Be right back. All right guys, we are here in my miscraft world and I will show you my quarry. So here's the new quarry, pretty basic. Quarry here, here's getting the power from my big reactor and it's sending stuff into my ender chest. Now I tried having this hook up directly. You can see here on the test rack, I'm sending items, but for some reason when I had the uh, item ducts flowing into here, it just wasn't going. Um, and I had the pipes going over here and then I tried you know, switching the output so it would go in here and that didn't seem to do anything. And then I'm like, all right, well, let me just try and rearrange it. And that was a big mistake. I hit the ender, uh, item duct with my uh, hammer here and all of a sudden I had items spewing out everywhere. It almost it like almost crashed me. I couldn't move anywhere. I had thousands of entities all over the place. Um, so I had pretty much what I had to do was I had to shut down the client, go back in, um, delete everything out of my inventory and just keep deleting till everything was gone. Um, then I was like, all right, well that's done. Uh, so I, I put the pipe back on here to, sen to essentially stop it. And then I went back to the overworld, got my ender chest, uh, slopped, it, slopped it down here and put the pipe on it so it could send everything down here. And as you can kind of see here, items are flowing pretty quickly into the sucker and it's I have the uh, with the AE system hooked up to the ender chest it's you know it's pulling stuff right out and if you want to know if you're curious this is a max size in the my last quarry was not max size on the quarry plus but this one is uh, since I had a flat surface here to deal with it was much easier to lay down the uh, marker pluses and get everything measured out. So if you want, I will show you just how far this quarry goes out. So uh, that was the edge and then I, it just keeps on going over here. It's uh, two layers down already. And then he, oh, way over here, many blocks down the road is the end. And then same thing going this way, 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 way over here. <laughs> pretty cool um, and as you can see here I am picking up I uh, got some water of some sort I think this is probably sludge maybe I'm not sure um, so yeah I'm gonna have that flowing down into here so that parts gonna that's the one downside about using uh, a quarry not in a flat surface or, or rather not underwater or whatnot because you'll I'll have crap like that you know flowing into my um, world so but I think I can stop that real easy here and real simple like just by going like that and then I'll at least get rid of that now I got some others here uh, from you know other you know, ones that were just already existing like this one so uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do about that um, and then I got a source source of oil oh that's kind of rude um, um, from that, but I'm like, eh, I won't worry about that, and I got a chunk error there, but I'll let the uh, quarry wor about, worry about that when it gets to it. So, in the meantime, we are going to go exploring and see if I can't get some more uh, research points. And as, in essence, what you can do to get research points is, uh, <clears throat> it, well, actually, let me... Uh, let me go back to my overworld and I'll meet you right back there. That way I can start from the beginning instead of kind of starting in the middle of things. Be right back. All right, guys, I've returned. And to start off the Thomcraft process, we're going to need a few things. Uh, one of which is a research table. Um, and you can see here, I've got mine here and with some stuff in it. But to in order to get to that, we're going to need, uh, well, you can either make you can make the table right off the right off the bat if you want. Uh, and that requires, where is the table? Right here is just a plain table from the Thalmcraft mod. And to make this, you just need a couple planks and then slabs on top. You make two of these, you put them right next to each other. And then you make a scribing tool right here. No, not that, no, not that, this one. 
And all that is is just a glass bottle, a feather, and some ink of some sort. Makes that, and then you just put the uh, glass, you just, when you put the table down here, it makes up the, the long table like this, and then you just put the little scribing tool on top, and then it auto forms into this thing. Now, the paper and the scroll aren't there by default. Usually it's just it's just the uh, little scribing tool there, but I have the, uh, the research notes here already in the paper, so that's why you see them on top. The other thing that you're going to need uh, to kind of store all the research that you need is the Thalmanomicon, and in order to get that you need to make a wand um, and you're going to start off with the basic wand and that is just an iron capped wooden wand and that's basically just a stick and then some iron caps on either side and to make that it's just a little iron nuggets and kind of like the uh, the cap pattern and then you just put that on either either side and then you're good to go but in order to make the thalmanomicon you need to make a regular vanilla bookshelf throw it on the ground kind of like you would like that and then use your uh, wand on it, click it, and then it becomes a little shiny little book. And that stores all your recipes and whatnot. And you can do kind of research, you can look up stuff and whatnot. Kind of works, functions in the same way as uh, Thumbcraft 3 did, but where you can, you know, flip through the pages and see how things are made and get a little background on all the items and whatnot. So kind of cool. The other item you're going to want is to make is this th thermometer. And to make that, you're going to need one of each of the uh, sh uh, shards that you get in the world. Uh, like the earth shard, fire shard, all that kind of stuff. And if I can find the recipe here, here it is. And any, I think, I'm pretty sure when I made mine, I, I just kind of threw my shards in any, no particular order. But I'm pretty sure it has to be in this exact order. Um, and I think that's, you, you can kind of tell that by the way these... Most recipes, see how this middle thing is kind of changing colors, uh, and a lot of recipes with these, you know, if it's like the same thing, these will all, always change. Um, but this one's not changing, as you can see here. So I'm pretty sure the shards have to be in this exact order, and then you have gold and then a piece of glass, and this can be any type of glass, judging by the way this thing is uh, changing like that. So you put that middle thing, and then you get this th the thermometer. And what this does is you just point it at blocks in the world, and you right click. And you're, you can see down there on the right hand uh, corner not, that nothing can be learned from this particular item. And what that does is it gives you research points. So you can see here on the chest, I've already uh, right clicked on a chest before and I've gotten three of tree and four of circle. I don't know what those uh, aspects are right off the bat. Uh, I haven't done much research. There's a, really, there's a lot of aspects. Um, there's primal ones like earth, air, fire, water, stuff like that, although they're not really called that. There is like uh, fire is ignis, water is agua, uh, air is air, but a e r, um, and uh, on from there. And then there's you know lots of different ones. Um, like you can see there's agua, uh, ignis, uh, instrumentum, iter, gelum, granum, limus, lux, herba, bestia, lots of things you, you can make, and you can. Um, get a lot of them by like combining a couple of them by doing this and um, the, I'll go into that later when we get down into the more compact stuff but essentially what you want to do is you want to run around the world uh, when you first you know first start and just point your little little circle at everything so like here, here just click and click and you know click some more <laughs> and I'll click this oh I got something. So right now I, right, I clicked the ME interface and I got one research point for Vitreous, two research points for Ordo, and something for something else. Four for Metallum, I think that's that little uh, thing is. And Wrath Lamp, let's do the same thing for that. And I do not have all the knowledge required to understand this. You will get that a lot when you're first starting out. Essentially what that means is you have not discovered the aspects needed to essentially just click on it the one time. So. Here, I'm still lacking some stuff. And let's do the same thing for the lily pad. Oh, that, now that's a nice one. I learned a whole kinds of stuff from that one. I got 10 Precantatio, 10, 11 Ignis. So I got, that's, that was a really good one to learn. So that, that's pretty awesome. I haven't done a pumpkin either. Okay, so I got one, four points from Mesas. So that's good. Let's do the same thing for water, or watermelon. Good deal. Ooh, and discovered famous, whatever. That is. What about Harvester? Can I learn that one? Yes, I can. 
You discover a clue, but it's lost since you can't record it. Hmm. I guess that means because I might be maxed in a certain aspect. Maybe that's what that means. Let's try the wrath lamp again. Up. Oh, okay. Now you see how I was able to learn that one. I couldn't do before. So I learned, must have learned something that I uh, didn't know before. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, I'm gonna let's go fly around the world and see if I can f uh, find anything else. Uh, one, oh, I know. Um, now that I got this thing, I'm gonna go back to my Miscraft world and show you um, what I was going to show you before before I came back here. And that's essentially what. Uh, in the previous ones, you could see little like if you had goggles or revealing or whatnot, you could see little uh, shiny, glowy things all over the world. Uh, what those are are different types of nodes. There's like uh, uh, pure aura nodes and evil nodes and all different kinds of stuff. Um, but what you can do is uh, you, they're they're a little hard to see. But these little, this little thermometer, what does you know, when you're looking through this, and it's a little awkward because you're holding something, and you, you kind of got to focus your vision. Um, and there's one right in front of us. Uh, but what this does is you can go right up to it like this, and you can, it becomes a little brighter. And then you just right click on it, and generally you learn a lot from it. And I got four points from each of those. And the other thing you can do is you can right click on it with your wand, and you can drain the aspects out of that ore node and kind of contain it in your wand. Now, I don't know how you get the stuff out of the wand quite just yet, um, but I know you can do that. And I, you, I think, I'm pretty sure you can deposit the wand uh, aspects in like a jar, I think. Uh, I'm just not exactly how sure how you do that. So I'm going to wander around here a little bit and go in this direction and see if I can't find a little dungeon. Number one, to, you know, kind of rate it for its goodies. Uh, but number two, because all those little dungeons have aura nodes in them. So that's a good way to get some uh, aspects and just some loot and whatnot. So I'm going to see if I can't find one here. Now, there, when I went around before, oh, there was all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to go in here. He's, that skeleton's going to follow me in, but he's going to follow me to his death. Ha ha. What do we got here? Dark forest biome. I will take that. And maple woods. And jungle hills. So all biomes. And let's go ahead and shop that. And let's put the chest back. Of the books because I don't need those. I don't need 15 copies of those. That's another thing that's weird in this uh, Miscraft Age. I got, I got, you know, I get multiple copies of everything, so it's kind of crazy. So what I get, I got mangrove, bloody heap biome. That sounds quite interesting, don't you think? Dunes in normal weather. Okay, so not not bad. Uh, I don't need arrows, and I really should have brought a notebook with me so I could store those pages. But I didn't, so that's that's all right though. What are, oh, and here we go. Here is the dungeon. So let's go ahead and go inside of that. A creeper gonna follow me? No. No, you're not. Okay, good deal. And the thing I want to do is go destroy. Kill Mr. Zombies here. And get rid of these guys, because I don't need those. Although I do need to figure out, see if I can't transport those some way. That would be really nice if I could just transport them off somewhere. That way I could, you know, take advantage of the bones and whatnot. So here's the ore node, and that looks like kind of like an evil one. But let's go ahead and scan you. Yeah, it's a sinister node. But again, I got a good amount of items from that. And these, this, and miscraft worlds are, are pretty good, good for this type of thing. If you can find like the uh, dungeon page or whatnot, it's kind of cool to, uh, you know, get some stuff like that. So here's some knowledge fragments. Those are those are good. I, I think I used those a lot in my Thumbcraft three in the previous and like a uh, Feed the Beast Unleashed. But I'm not sure how much I used them in. Uh, I'm not sure if they're useful in the same regard for this version. 
uh, Nether Quartz, I will take you, and there's, here's some, here's another magical mod, uh, Blood Magic, this one looks kind of cool, I'm not exactly sure how to use it, but, um, since it's, you know, you know, free, why not take it, sure, why not, and, ooh, Oblivion Frame, so if I, when I once I get it and start doing bees, I'm definitely going to do that, whoa, what, what happened there, did a creeper fall on me, maybe? I guess so. Well, that was kind of rude, don't you think? Alright, I don't need any of that. So I'm going to put you all in there. I don't need you, don't need you, don't need you. Don't need you or you. Huh. I guess it was a creeper. Alright. Let's see if I can get out of here without locked in all right so i'm gonna fly around and see if i can't get a little bit more aspects and then i will join you back at my research table be right back guys all right guys we are back and here we are at the research table and what you essentially do is you got a piece of paper in here along with your scribing tools and you can kind of click on an aspect you think you want to understand um so i you would kind of click on, I think on this one, I've been doing, um, I think it was fire maybe, or no, I'm not sure what it was I did to get started on this, but essentially you click on an aspect that you think you want to, you know, mess with, you put it in here like that, and then you click this little green button and it pops over, over here, and you get these little undiscovered or unlinked or or nodes and this one is if you find a recipe it's one's hidden up and you get a research note telling you what you're trying to learn so you got to think you got to think of what would you know be included on here and now there is a uh, kind of a cheat sheet online uh, on the feed the beast forms if you want to go that route um, it, this thumbcraft's kind of a uh, intensive and kind of a, a grindy um, at mod and you need a lot of research points to go back and forth and I'll show you why research points are kind of a pain in some regard um, you see here I got 76 of fire but you see I only got four of Fabrico and what you do essentially is I'm gonna go ahead and use one of my Fabrico here and what you do is you put that in here and like I said what that does if it's in your chart it shows up here and what this does is that you your what you the idea of this is to link all four or however many there are of these little uh, dark purple ones to the shiny blue ones and what you do is you click on the aspect and then you click it over here and try and link them up and each of these little runes cannot be more than one uh, space away from the unlit runes to link them up so this one is one down and then one over so this one's okay but this one is one down actually one down but it's two away from that one and it's much farther away from that one so this isn't doing me good so I can't really move that at all um, so I don't necessarily want to do anything with that I want to see where the other aspects are um, so let the other one I know I need is precontatio so let's see where that one's at okay so now that one's this one so this one is one over and one up so this one links okay um, but this one is not so I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move you down and in order, you can't move these. See, when I click on them, these don't move. So in order to, you got to turn, essentially turn them, the runes off. But every time you click on one, it uses an aspect. So now I can move this one over that way. And let's move you one more. And this one is right here. So I'll move you there and here, here, here. And let's see what that does. Boom. Now you see how I got that one linked to that. Now what I can, what I kind of want to do is I want to move this guy over here, and then I want to discover what that other aspect is, which I think is Machina. Now I got one of that, which is gonna hurt. So I'm gonna discover where you are, so I at least know where it's at. So I'm gonna have to, you know, find some more of Machina. So that's the rune I need. So I know I need to move those guys over there and try and link those up. So I'm gonna try and get some more Machina and I will be right back so I can show you a finished recipe. Be right back guys. All right guys, I am back and I think I, I was able to fly around the world quite a little bit. Um, I picked, I 
<laughs> flew around for quite a bit, quite a bit of time. Uh, ended up dying. Uh, flew into um, an area where there was a little bit too much more for me, and I lost, you know, kind of all my levels here. Um, I, I want, I, you know, I, I know I probably should have been recording while I was flying around, but I thought, eh, you know, the video's already, you know, at, at 20 minutes, and it would just, I'm just gonna be flying around looking for points to use, basically on nodes and. This wasn't a good situation. I was able to get all my stuff back, luckily. Um, I didn't take too much stuff with me. I kind of dropped off for everything that I had, with the exception of, of course, my thumb uh, thermometer here and my tools and whatnot, just in case. But, you know, I did, you know, lose my levels, but not a big deal. Anyway, I have moved the little shape seer into position, and this one is now uh, one over and one here, same distance for here and here. So uh, hopefully, cross your fingers, I should be in the spot where I should be able to connect everything. So let's see. Ta-da. Oh, not, en not good enough. So I'm in good position for this one to click, but I'm not here to connect these guys. So. Let's go ahead and move some more out of the way, but I can't do that without some more scribing tools. So I'm gonna have to combine the ones I have because I got some weak ones, I believe. Hmm, maybe not. Let me grab one, I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. I have a new scribing tools and actually ended up moving my Fabrico around too. So let's see if that did any good, okay. So that connected that one up, so now I got these little two. So did this work? No. Uh, this, this is the part about research that is quite frustrating. Uh, it's just a matter of being kind of lucky and moving runes around till you get them where you think they might work, which is kind of the sucky part, which is using uses up uh, a, lot of, a lot of these runes sometimes. So I'm gonna, once again, move you uh, let's I'm gonna switch these positions maybe that's what I need to maybe these can't connect well yeah these two can't connect to themselves all right be right back all right guys we're back and I figured it out essentially what had to be done and it, it kind of clicked when I was reading over the Thalmanomicon and this is one reason why you want to uh, make that is it kind of gives you hints on what you do um, so I was I was here on the basic information tab and I went here to the <clears throat> research area and essentially near the very end of the book it tells you what what you do with the research and it tells you each rune is linked and whatnot and active runes act as possible bridges and whatnot and you need to, and this part is kind of what kind of stuck with me is like you need runes to create a chain and the word chain is kind of what I focused on there and essentially what I was doing here on the workbench was I had kind of like a little line going here and then I tried to go up like this so I was kind of it wasn't really a chain it was more like a line and then a, a midsection going up and I think that was what I was doing wrong in uh, research for my other things and so instead of a, a straight line connecting all the runes I was kind of just branching off and what you don't want to do is branch off you want to create a straight line as possible and the other problem I had was I had the atom in this formation, but it was just connecting from here straight over to here. And that was a problem. It wasn't it wasn't connecting up to here for some reason. So the other thing I had to do was move a blank rune kind of in between these two guys so that it would force the connection up to that top rune. Because putting a rune here blocks the connection from this rune to that rune, forcing it to go here. So that's my you know my little research and once you complete the chain they all light up and your little notes turn into a discovery and then you take the discovery into your research bar and you simply right click it and you've learned it so now I have learned infusion so now I can move on to something else anyway guys that's uh, all I'm gonna cover today uh, in the next episode um, let me know what you want to see if you want to see more Thalmcraft or if you would like to see me building the room for my uh, future Thalmcraft uh, research and creation of stuff um or if you want to see me do something completely different let me know in the kind of comments thanks guys be sure to leave a like and i will see you later bye guys